Welcome to Now Anyone Can Hand Feed Their Backyard Birds Without Leaving the Comfort of Their Own Home. This is the third video in the A Bird in the Hand video series. And in this video, you will learn a quick and easy technique to condition your backyard birds to feed out of your bare hand through an open window. In order to be able to hand feed from a window in your home, you will need five basic things. Number one, you will of course need the birds to feed. Number two, you will need food to feed the birds. Number three, you will need feeders to put the food in to attract the birds to your yard. Number four, you will need a window with lace curtains from which to feed the birds. And number five, you will need a quick and easy technique to condition the birds to move from the feeders to your hand to feed. Out of all your backyard birds, the easiest to hand feed will be chickadees, then comes tufted tit mice, red-breasted nuthatches, white-breasted nuthatches, downy woodpeckers, and blue jays. I've also been able to hand feed sparrows, starlings, cardinals, and red-bellied woodpeckers. Luckily, these are all fairly common backyard feeder birds, so you shouldn't have any problem attracting a few of these different kinds of birds into your yard. We will also choose a seed mix that will attract a wide variety of birds. For best results, find a seed mixture that contains lots of sunflower seeds. I use a KT brand of seed mix that is especially formulated to attract songbirds. This is a special mixture composed mainly of sunflower seeds. It has the small black oil sunflower seeds as well as the larger striped sunflower seed. Sunflower seeds, especially the small black oil seeds, are a favorite food of most songbirds. It also has millet, cracked corn, sunflower hearts, and peanuts. I found that nut hatches as well as blue jays are especially attracted to the peanuts. They will pick out and eat all the peanuts before they'll eat any of the sunflower seeds, which is a fact we'll use to our advantage when it comes time to coax them to our hand later on. I've also found that blue jays are especially attracted to whole unshelled peanuts. So now I add a few unshelled peanuts to the feeder just for the blue jays. If you can't find a seed mix that contains peanuts, just add a few peanuts to the mix yourself. Seed mixes containing nuts will cost a little more, but it will be well worth the added expense in the long run 
to help attract the birds and keep them coming to your yard. You may be competing with your neighbor for the birds also, so any advantage that using a good quality seed mix with nuts will provide will only help to assure your hand feeding success. Besides the seed mix, we will also use a suet cake to attract downy woodpeckers into our yard. Suet is the favorite food of downy woodpeckers and thus is the easiest way to attract them. But the main reason why I like to also use suet is that suet provides a lot more hand feeding enjoyment than just using a regular seeds and nuts. For example, most birds will land on your hand, grab a seed or nut and fly away fairly quickly. But a downy woodpecker will land on your hand and spend a considerable amount of time there eating the suet and picking out the seeds or nuts embedded in the suet. I have had downy woodpeckers feeding out of my hand for as long as three minutes before leaving. So along with your regular bag of bird food, pick up a suet cake for the downy woodpeckers. There are a lot of different types of cakes to choose from, but I've had my best results using peanut flavored cakes. To put this method of hand feeding to use, we will need three basic types of feeders. Number one, we will need a small suet feeder to hold the suet cake. Number two, we will need a feeder to hold the seed mix. You can find an inexpensive plastic pole mounted feeder such as this one for just a few dollars. We will use a pole feeder so we can move the feeder around the yard and won't be limited to hanging it just from a tree. As we move the feeder, we will also be able to move the birds. We will be able to move them to any location close to the house that we might choose. And number three, we will need some type of inexpensive plastic window feeder that will attach to the window glass with suction cups. Next, we will need to choose a window in our home from which to feed the birds. If you are already feeding birds from a feeder in your yard, you might want to choose a window closest to the location of your feeder. That will make it easy to move the birds from the feeder to the window of your house. If you aren't already using a feeder, try to choose a window that's close to natural cover for the birds, such as trees or shrubs. These are spots that birds naturally visit and make it easy to attract the birds to your feeder and then to your window. I have been feeding my birds from a feeder hanging from a tree in my backyard. My bedroom window looks out at the feeder that is only 25 or 30 feet from the window. So I have chosen to use that window from which to feed my birds. You will also need some type of lace curtains to cover your window. This is important because it allows you to conceal yourself behind the curtains and still be able to see the birds by looking through the patterns in the lace. As the birds become accustomed to feeding at your window and out of your hand, you will eventually be able to open the curtains more and more without scaring away the birds. This is the part of the video that will show you step by step how to get the birds from your feeders to your hand. The first thing to do is fill your feeders and put them in a good location. Choose a spot close to the nearest trees or shrubs to place your pole feeder. I will be placing my feeder near a tree in my backyard where I am already feeding birds. I'll put the pole feeder in the ground close to the tree. And don't forget those unshelled peanuts for the blue jays. Then I'll just attach the suet cake to the bottom of the feeder. Now I'll quit using the other feeders so that the birds will have to move to the pole feeder to find any food to eat. I will just give the birds a couple days to get used to feeding from the pole feeder. Now is also a good time to start watching your feeder as much as you can and make a note of which birds are feeding and at what times they are feeding. You will be surprised at how the different birds will show up at the feeder at about the same times each day. Learning their habits and knowing at about what times they will be at your feeder will allow you to choose the most productive times of the day to be at your window to hand feed them. 
For example, when I wanted to hand feed my downy woodpeckers last November, I would schedule my lunch break from work so that I could go home, eat lunch, and be sitting at my bedroom window at about 1.40 in the afternoon. And I usually didn't have to wait more than 5 or 10 minutes before the downy woodpeckers would show up to feed. Our next step will be to start moving the feeder and the birds closer to the window of our house. Since my birds are already only about 25 feet from my window, I'll move the pole feeder about half the distance this time, and the next time I'll move the feeder the rest of the way to the window. If you started feeding your birds farther away than 30 feet or so, you might only move your feeder a third of the way this time and a third of the way next time, then move your feeder the rest of the way to the window. Just give the birds a couple days to get used to each new location. It's late fall now and feeder activity has really been picking up the last couple of weeks and the birds should continue to feed heavily through the winter into early spring. This will also be your best hand feeding period of the year. Then as the breeding and nesting seasons start and as the birds natural food supply becomes more plentiful, feeder activity and hand feeding success will start to drop off again only to pick up again later the next fall. Our next move or two will have our pole feeder at our window, so we need to go ahead and install the window feeder. My window is a type that slides open from the side, so I'll mount my feeder as close to the bottom and side edges of the window as possible. If you have a window that slides up from the bottom, just mount your feeder somewhere along the bottom edge, then you'll be able to stick your hand out just under your feeder. After letting the birds feed at the last location for a couple days, we can go ahead and move the pole feeder the rest of the way to the window. Move it to a spot about two feet to the side of your window feeder. This will help get them used to being close to the window, but won't have them so close as to make them too nervous about using it. The nuthatches and chickadees were watching me from the trees above as I was moving the feeder and could hardly wait for me to back away far enough that they could use it again. After the downy woodpeckers have visited your new feeder location a few times, go ahead and remove the soot from the cage and just put part of the cake in the feeder for them to use. Now a female downy woodpecker shows up at the feeder that doesn't seem to be bothered at all by the new location or the fact that the cage has disappeared altogether. Feeding in close to the house seems to have been an easy transition for most of the birds so far. Those nut hatches have really been hauling away those peanuts and it looks as though they've finally run out. One of them finally decides to take the risk and hop over to the window feeder where there's an ample supply of seeds and nuts waiting. So now to move all the birds to the window, I'll take all the food out of the pole feeder and move it to the window feeder.
I'll leave the empty pole feeder in place because it's something familiar to the birds and it gives them a close perch from which to check out the window feeder and makes the transition to the window feeder a little easier for the birds. It's not long before a blue jay shows up looking for a peanut, but blue jays are a lot more wary than chickadees, nuthatches, and downy woodpeckers, so he's not going to make the move to the window feeder quite as easily. The nuthatches are still wanting to feed at the pole feeder where they feel more secure, but they are quickly learning that they'll have to move to the window feeder. The chickadee is still looking the situation over, but finally does drop his guard and make the move to the window feeder. The blue jay shows up at the bush again to check things out, but still isn't quite sure it's safe to move in close to the window to feed. The blue jay finally decides to use the window feeder, but not to hang around any longer than he absolutely has to. Okay, now while the birds are getting used to using the window feeder, we're going to modify the feeder a little bit, so that when we finally stick our hand out the window to feed the birds, they will have already been conditioned to feed out of it. What we're going to do is to make a simple fake hand to attach to the feeder, and then once the birds are conditioned to feeding out of the fake hand, all we have to do is just change places with our real hand. What we use to make the fake hand is a cheap plastic spatula you can get at the store for under a dollar. We'll use some aluminum foil and any old pair of socks you might have laying around the house. And to attach the fake hand to the feeder, we'll need a screw or a bolt. And if your spatula has a cutout in the handle like this one, we need a washer to put over the screw so that the head of the bolt doesn't pull through the handle of the spatula. First, tear off a sheet of aluminum foil about 30 inches long and fold it in half. Then fold it in half again. Now we'll lay the spatula right about in the middle of it, the head of the spatula. And we'll start rolling the foil from one side. Just roll it up over the edge of the spatula. That will hold the spatula in on that side. Now roll the other side over. So it just rolls past the edge of the spatula. Now roll the top down. Then just bring these bottom corners up over the, the handle. That'll hold the spatula inside the foil, and it also makes a cupped out area, much like your hand, to hold the seed in so it doesn't roll up off over the side of the spatula. Now to cover the handle of the spatula, to imitate our wrist, we'll take a piece of foil about oh, two foot long. We'll fold it in half, fold it in half again. Now we'll lay our spatula so that the handle sticks down about an inch and kind of roll it over from each side. Now if you don't already have a hole or a slot in your spatula, you want to go ahead and drill a hole to, to fit your screw about a half inch from the end. And after that's done, you just take one of your old socks and put over it. Okay, that's pretty.
pretty much it then. Okay, next we'll drill a hole on the bottom of the feeder to attach the fake hand. Just kind of line it up along the edge of the feeder, but so that the back edge of the spatula doesn't come behind the back edge of the feeder. And just make a little mark on there with your pencil. And go ahead and drill that hole. Once you get the hole drilled, all that's left to do is just go ahead and screw the fake hand to the bottom of the feeder. Now all that's left to do is to go ahead and put regular seed mix into the feeder. And into the hand we're going to put the good stuff because this is where we want to, to bring the birds. We'll put part of a suet cake for the woodpeckers. We'll add some of the regular seed mix here for other birds. And we'll put some peanut pieces to draw the chickadees and the nut hatches and blue jays and cardinals like them. And especially for the blue jays, we'll put some of the whole peanuts. That's the kind of mix you want to keep in your artificial hand. That's what will draw the birds that are the easiest to hand feed. Once we start hand feeding the birds, we'll have to remove the fake hand to make room for our hand beside the feeder. And then when we're finished feeding, we'll put the fake hand back on the feeder. That way the birds are always used to seeing that hand alongside the feeder and won't be alarmed when you go to hand feed them. Or you can do what I've done and spend another six or seven dollars and buy two matching feeders instead of just one. And put the fake hand on one feeder and use the other feeder when you hand feed. Okay, now we'll just hang the feeder with the fake hand outside and wait for the birds to start using it. After a few days when all your birds have visited the fake hand a half dozen times or so, you can move on to the next step which will be to start hand feeding the birds yourself. In the beginning, we'll start out by wearing the other sock on our hand so we'll resemble the fake hand, but eventually we'll condition the birds to feed out of our bare hand. So go ahead and remove the feeder with the fake hand and replace it with a plain feeder. Pull the sock up over your hand and load it with a piece of suet, some seed, and some peanuts, just like you did for the fake hand. And open the window just enough so you can position your hand close to the feeder in about the same area that the fake hand was in. Pull the curtain up and over your arm so that you are totally concealed from the birds. Now just be as still as possible and wait for the action to start. This first attempt at hand feeding my birds was made while the birds were well into their early morning feeding period. Since they were already feeding heavily out of the fake hand, it was only a matter of minutes before they were also feeding out of my hand. So when you make your first attempt at hand feeding your birds, wait until the birds have also begun feeding heavily. Then when you switch places with the fake hand, as promised, in only a matter of minutes, you will be hand feeding your own backyard birds. In a couple days after each of your birds has been to your sock covered hand a half a dozen times or so, you can go ahead and get ready for the next step, which will be to start getting the birds used to feeding out of a partially bare hand. Don't forget at the end of each feeding session to put the fake hand back on the feeder so that your birds stay used to seeing a hand beside the feeder. First, we will cut a slit in the end of the sock, just large enough to allow the tips of your fingers to stick out. Now get the birds used to feeding this way. When the birds return to the feeder and find your fingers sticking out of the sock, they will hesitate at first.
They will usually make several trips to the feeder to look your hand over, but eventually they will feel at ease enough to go ahead and resume feeding out of your hand. In a couple more days when the birds are used to seeing your fingertips, go ahead and cut another slit for your thumb and pull the sock down enough to expose all of your fingers and your thumb. Not only does the sock allow you to bare your hand gradually, but it also helps to keep your hand warm on those cold days. Finally, after the birds are used to your bare fingers, go ahead and pull the sock the rest of the way down your hand and expose all of your hand and fingers. As before, the birds might hesitate the first few times they visit your hand, but in a short time you will be feeding your backyard birds out of your bare hand. Now you know the basic steps you need to take to get your own backyard birds to feed out of your bare hand. Should you have any trouble getting any of your birds through any of these steps, simply go back to the previous step where they were feeding regularly and give them a few extra days before moving on to the next step. Once your birds are conditioned to feeding out of your bare hand, try to spend a little time each day hand feeding them. If you let too many days lapse without hand feeding the birds, you'll have to go back to the step where you covered your hand with a sock and start conditioning them again. Weather conditions will also affect your hand feeding success. If you get snow or ice covering the birds' natural food supplies, they will be a lot more willing to risk taking food out of your bare hand. For example, when the Blue Jays were first exposed to my totally bare hand, they would fly in to within a couple feet of my hand for a look but wouldn't chance coming in close enough to grab a peanut. They held back for a couple days just watching from a distance. They would wait until I put the feeder with the fake hand back out before feeding. Then that night we got a three inch snowfall and sure enough, early that next morning when I stuck out my bare hand full of peanuts, they were finally willing to put aside their caution and feed out of my bare hand. Now that the birds were readily feeding out of my bare hand, it was time to see if someone else could take my place and still get the same results. My wife Gloria sat down at the window and it wasn't but a minute or so before she also was hand feeding the birds. So once you condition the birds to feeding out of your hand, family and friends will also be able to reap the rewards of your efforts without any effort at all on their part. It just doesn't get any better than that. That just about wraps up this video on hand feeding your backyard birds. By watching this video and putting to use the quick easy method described in the video, you will soon be well on your way to becoming a master at hand feeding your backyard birds. And you will soon be enjoying all the thrills and excitement that hand feeding your backyard birds has to offer.